Hey everyone, it's Tyler, the Antenna Man. There's no denying that the current digital over-the-air TV standard is very fragile. Unless you have a decent antenna set up, TV stations can easily pixelate or drop out completely. With how reliable the former analog TV signals were and the fact that our smartphones can easily get a signal anywhere, why are digital TV signals so fragile? Would you believe that it can actually be traced to an FCC decision to use a less robust digital modulation despite warnings from engineers? Why were the engineers ignored? If you're a cord cutter or use an antenna, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, but don't only do that, hit the bell icon so that way you receive a notification whenever I post a new video. So throughout the years, I had discussions with several individuals involved with the launch of ATSC 3.0. I was informed about a technical flaw with the current ATSC 1.0 digital TV standard used by TV stations in the United States that made it so fragile and unreliable in some cases. You see, when the ATSC 1.0 TV standard was developed in the 1990s, a decision had to be made on what type of modulation to use. The term modulation may be hard to explain, so I'll just use the example of AM and FM radio. There's amplitude modulation, or AM radio, and frequency modulation, or FM radio. One is obviously better than the other. When ATSC 1.0 was in the development stages, there was the option to either choose 8VSB or COFDM modulation. Most engineers will agree that COFDM is superior to 8VSB. It can handle changing conditions and is very stable to the point that cell phones and even the new ATSC 3.0 standard use it. This made me wonder, why on earth was the less reliable 8VSB modulation chosen for the digital TV standard? To find out, I reached out to three broadcast engineers. They spoke to me on the condition of anonymity because some are employed by a company that may be involved with the development of future TV standards. All three of them said the main reason why 8VSB was likely chosen over the more stable COFDM on the digital TV standard was because of political reasons that can be tied to one company. Back in the 1990s, Zenith, then a US-based company, developed the ATSC 1.0 digital TV standard with 8VSB modulation. Like most political issues in the United States, Zenith, later purchased by LG, lobbied hard and won despite data showing flaws with their TV standard. At first, I didn't think there was any proof regarding this claim. After all, hindsight is always 2020. There's no way that the problems with the fragile 8VSB modulation from Zenith were brought to the FCC's attention before the digital TV standard was finalized. No way at all, right? Not quite. Here's a letter sent to the FCC by Mark Aiken of Sinclair way back in 1999. It brings up the issues with 8VSB and requests that the FCC change the modulation to COFDM. Specifically, it states, quote, the ATSC 8VSB standard does not currently permit reliable over-the-air reception of DT with simple antennas in broadcasters' core business areas or permit portable or mobile services. Both of these ended up being true. How many of you had unreliable reception before finding my YouTube channel and whatever happened to portable TVs? The document also says, quote, given the reception problems, Continued reliance on the 8VSB standard would diminish viewing functionality and pose unnecessary costs on U.S. consumers both during and after the digital transition. This also ended up being true with many antenna viewers having to upgrade their antennas in order to keep their local channels once analog signals were shut down. Here's an article published by TVTech.com around the same time about Sinclair's concern over 8VSB. The article states that Sinclair's demonstration showed that COFDM worked in several situations when the ABSB signal was impossible to receive reliably on consumer indoor TV antennas. What's ironic is that COFDM ended up being used with the new ATSC 3.0 TV standard, so ABSB on ATSC 1.0 was definitely a mistake by the Advanced Television Systems Committee and the FCC. 
Most of the world already uses a COFDM based over the air TV standard, so North America is decades behind the rest of the world using 8VSB. I understand that mistakes happen, but what I'm not happy about is that it was a preventable mistake had the engineers been listened to. Most broadcast engineers seem to agree that the fragile 8VSB modulation was chosen over COFDM for political reasons. You see, Zenith developed an 8VSB version of the digital TV standard, LG bought them out, lobbied hard, won, and ended up making a ton of money as a result. For the digital transition, the government funded about $1.8 billion for digital converter box coupons. Zenith, or rather its parent company LG, definitely took a chunk of that money based on my memory that most digital converter boxes sold around the digital transition were the Zenith model that you see here. Beyond what seems like a main political reason, there were a few other reasons why AVSB might have been chosen over COFDM that seem to be well-intentioned. AVSB can be decoded with a lower signal-to-noise ratio than COFDM, which in theory means a better range. While this is true, it may not have made a difference because of the multipath issues with 8VSB that make it unstable in heavily wood areas, changing weather conditions, cars that drive by, planes that fly by, you, you guys know the story. Another reason was finances. AVSB was believed to cover the same areas as COFDM with less power, which would translate into a lower electric bill for broadcasters. COFDM was more complex and would also cost more initially to deploy, despite a more reliable signal in the long run. Since broadcasters had to pay out of pocket to build out their digital signals during the digital transition, it made sense that the Advanced Television Systems Committee and FCC took the approach that was more affordable for broadcasters. Now don't get me wrong, the current digital TV standard can be picked up reliably in most cases, but you really need the proper antenna for your area. The average consumer who buys a small antenna from Walmart or Amazon is likely to fail unless they are in a strong signal area. This may give people the false notion that an antenna won't work in their area, which in turn causes them to stick with expensive cable and satellite TV services. This is why my YouTube channel exists. Watch my videos to find ways to improve your reception either through some small tips or with a better antenna. I also offer antenna recommendations specific to your area on my website at antennamanpa.com. I run a reception report at your location, take a look at the frequency, signal strengthening, and tree coverage, determine what antenna will work best for you based on my experience testing out over 100 antenna models, and actually installing them in four TV markets. Thanks for watching this video and hopefully you found it interesting. An additional thanks to everyone who supports me on Patreon or is a member of my YouTube channel. If my videos helped you cut the cord or if you just think they're cool and would like to help support them while gaining exclusive perks, such as behind the scenes content, access to my videos ad free one day early, and direct contact with me, visit patreon.com forward slash antennaman or click the join button this video and you can also click the thanks button. If you're on Facebook, you can like my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash antennamanpa. If you're not on Facebook and would like to receive email updates whenever I post new videos, feel free to sign up to my email list. I include a link in the description of the video. Stay tuned to my YouTube channel for more cord cutting and time related videos and have an awesome day.